Greetings, YouTube, Tumblr slash the rest of the internet. Um, this video that I'm making today is a video um, not to really propagate an idea, but to create ideas. And uh, the creation of ideas is an idea that is not exactly compatible with religion. In other words, uh, thinking for yourself and religion are pretty different. But I'm sure a lot of you guys knew that. Uh, just to be really blunt here, I'm an atheist. I'm not going to try to beat around the bush. I think the earthly religions are blatantly wrong. I think that the institution of religion has done more evil than it has good since its inception. So, um, with that being said, the question that uh, I want you to ask yourselves is why you believe what you believe. I'm going to explain to you guys how I got to my conclusion, but it's not about my journey to the conclusion that there is no God. Uh, it's about your journey. Uh, we're all going to have a different pathway to get to wherever we get to. Um, but it's of utmost importance that you come to your own conclusions, because if you don't, then you really have made no opinion. You're a drone. You're simply conforming to an idea. And to me, that is really the most reprehensible form of intellectual depravity. It's just bad. Very bad. So, uh, to start off, um, I'm just going to show you a couple of logical fallacies that I've personally come to. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, it's just really an example. Um, and in my opinion, this example disproves God. Um, so, for you people who are wary of what's to come, don't worry. Uh, nothing too offensive here. Although, frankly, I don't care if I've offended, because I may be offending, but the institution of religion has killed. I'm not killing, hopefully. <laughs> um, so back to my example. Not really an example, just a statement of the truth. We have the Bible. The Bible is the infallible word of God. The Bible is the be-all, end-all. It is God's word, and if it's in the Bible, it is true and right and righteous. And all those who dare say that it is wrong are blasphemers, bad people who go to hell for eternity spend the rest of their existence in damnation. Okay. Likely story, bro. Anyways, uh, we have this infallible book. And, um, you know, I'm just gonna, looking from the Bible itself, I'm going to disprove the Bible. And here's how. Christian doctrine has it that their God is perfect. Um, to them, perfection means effectively completely alien to all things earthly, to all things mortal and human. God is immortal. He is perfect. Um, his word, not his word, but his, um, his very presence transcend anything a human could ever understand until getting to heaven then it's hey it ain't that much of a secret anymore is it come on we got a bunch of booze and some bear pong tables and those angels crazy when they're drunk okay i added that little bit myself i'm sorry christians just having a little fun so anyways um we've got this uh, infallible word of god and we have this perfect God. And then something in my brain just kind of goes, wait a second. 
if God is perfect, which by definition means incomprehensible to man, how could there be a word of God? Did I mean let's say God tells them what to write, his you know, the people who transcribe what he writes. They're human. Unless they are God himself, they're not going to get across perfection, an infallible word. So in my opinion, the very existence of God, by definition, means that there can be no word of God. It doesn't make sense, right? Um, because that transcription, that process of getting to God, so let's say Moses or some apostle dude. That's not working out. What's getting down to the mortal guy who's writing it is muddled. Uh, the Bible was written across a span of generations, many generations. It has been translated. It has, it has been, everything has been done with it. You know? And, uh, there are these great theological debates over the meaning. What is the meaning of the Word of God? Uh, what are well, you know? What are the semantics of this language that has been passed on to us from God? And uh, it's just huge debates uh, over everything that's written in the Bible. Um, so, which brings me to another point: is that Many Christians today, especially, it's like some sort of neo-Christian trend, are actually denying the Old Testament, saying that the Old Testament is somehow less relevant than the New Testament. Have you ever seen a Christian who's like, yeah, I like Jesus, but man, like, sacrifice to animals, man, that's not chill. Like, Jesus is cool, bro, but like... I don't know if I think it's cool to, like, stone people, you know? Like, that ain't cool. Well. Wait a second. But didn't, didn't the Ten Commandments come from the Old Testament? They did. So, if the Old Testament isn't what you do, then the Ten Commandments are also irrelevant. So... What happened to our Christian moral code? Now we're just left with Jesus saying, Yeah, I love your neighbor, Jesus. Yeah, die for people. We'll get nailed to a cross. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, this really reveals a huge gaping logical fallacy. Uh, namely, and the fallacy is really simple. If God is perfect, if God is is all-encompassing, omniscient, bam. If God is God, and the Word of God is infallible, and just a completely accurate, you know, let's, let's assume here, for the sake of argument, that uh, the, the transfer of information from God to the author of the Bible, let's say that that transfer of information is perfectly. Let's say that the author transcribed what God really intended completely faithfully. Well, that makes that makes uh, the problem even that much worse for these Old Testament denying Christians. Um, it basically says, you know, you're wrong. The Old Testament is also right. So you cannot have an omniscient God without having an Old Testament that is completely, completely legitimate to Christian ideology, theology, um, and moral ethical codes. The Old Testament, by definition, is just as important as the New Testament. You cannot deny one without denying the other. Um, so, you know, if, I, if someone doesn't believe in the, in the Old Testament, they don't believe in the Bible in my eyes. They're inconsistent, and uh, they have no faith in the Old Testament. So, uh, let's continue this further.
this logical train, so to speak. Let's say that the transfer of information was perfect. And let's say that we all believe that God is perfect and the Bible is infallible. And yet, uh, Mr. Super Awesome PhD in Christian Theology guy comes up and says, you know, slavery's bad. And, uh, yeah, we shouldn't stone people publicly for committing a couple sins. And yeah, it's not necessary to sacrifice animals. It's all good. Let's say that happens. Um, and, you know, this is just passed on as law. Well, God, in his omniscience, transcends time. He transcends any mortal circumstance. So, if God really did write the Bible, if God's word is the Bible, then nothing in the Bible would be temporal. Nothing could be outdated. You see what I'm saying? Everything, by definition, would have to be applicable at any point in time. By definition, I'm not making things up. I'm using you know simple logical logical circuit here to explain this to you guys. So when we come to find out that the Bible can be outdated, that the Bible, uh, you know, has chronology, um, that there are circumstantial, that there's circumstantial literature in the Bible, and the Bible is infallible in the Word of God. All right, this is this is a paradox. You are trying to incorporate imperfection with perfection, which is completely turns the entire concept of God flat on its face. The whole idea implodes. Um, so what this really is proof of is that since God isn't man, since God isn't some paradox of perfection and imperfection. You know, since Christians themselves acknowledge that God is not man. Uh, if imperfection is fundamentally entrenched in Christian doctrine's idea of God, that proves that mankind is involved in the creation of God. This proves it. So really, in my humble opinion, I have disproved that God is different from man. God comes from our mind. And think about what I just explained to you. you know, that to me, when I thought of it that way, when I had that revelation, I really knew in that moment that God was a creation to help people get by. And, uh, you know, to all the Christians out there, the burden of proof is always on the religious folk. Um, science does not assume anything. Atheists are asked to prove that there is no God. But religious folk are never asked to prove God. They make the leap of faith. We make no leap of faith. We simply accept what we can observe. Um, so, you know, the point of this video was to basically prove to Christians, feel free to argue with me all you want. Um, I love intellectual stimulation. If you're Christian and you can really come at me, the well-thought argument, I, that's awesome. Um, but I feel like I've shown how Christianity is an artificial construct created by homo sapiens. Um, so, this video is almost over. I can make another one. I just want you guys to think. Think for yourselves. Escape the orthodoxy of thought that you've been confined to by your parents, by the religious institution. Free yourself not only applies to religion, applies to politics, applies to everything. We're being constantly indoctrinated, and it's up to you to make the decision to think for yourself or be led on by other people. That is all.